And now for something completely different. Allison's here. Is everyone? Oh, Nick is, Nick is here. Okay. It's me. What took you so long, boy? I was speedrunning the presentation, and I'm almost <laughs> done. We what? Have... You have a presentation? I have a full-on presentation. Oh, <laughs> this is why I enjoy him. He does not skimp. He does everything that I would the do. The only thing... I'm literally missing is my historical examples because I did not know at all where to look. Wait a minute. What does oh, historical give you examples a site mean? That helped me. Okay. That would be lovely. <laughs> because I use two songs find, I enjoy. So. Trying to find pathos and fucking historical shit is a pain in the ass. Hey, oh, sweetheart. Uh, family uh, family uh. friendly show. Oh, are you recording now? Yes. Wait, you're recording? You should have said something. Yeah, boy. Eh. Th this is the uh, unedited version, so I I'm going to be smoothing this all out, but I just wanted to let you know, so, you yes. know, we're not in the middle of it. I'm just r running through the uh, the uh, seven dirty words. We give warning before we do call. <laughs> yes, oh, I, uh... Yes, ma'am. I had a song that has like some naughty words in it, but I uh, I cut it off. Nick, before you know what they said, said, man. Before any are said, I cut it off, and all the information I need is in there. Oh, okay, it's implied. Cares. It's not like nobody's ever heard these words Cuss before. Words. I just well, it's a slur. Make... So, <laughs> well, all right, that's a little There's bit a different. There's a difference between. That's yeah. a little bit different. It's Tyler the Creator, so it's okay. Uh, okay. Chick Oh, also, wait, can we have a definition of what historical examples are? It was yeah. American no, Revolution American time Revo period. What she said. Wait, what? American Revolution time period. Oh, shit. Okay, well, I gotta go fix all of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thank you so much for this website, actually. Yeah, if you go to um, documents, it'll give you a list of... Um, it's up at the top. It'll give you a list of speeches and important papers. The one you sent is just perfect, like the one it's already oh. on. <laughs> no, no, that's I, I, I literally <laughs> control F used, question uh, mark and then found everything I needed. <laughs> I used uh, like the last pair. A lot of the time to find pathos and just parallelism, you just have to look at the, either the end or the beginning. Mm. Alright, like literally everything else is there except the text for the story. Oh, and I guess I need to cite my work. Honestly, if it was just like historical references, it would have been so much easier because I just could have done World War II. Yeah. Um, when we sit, when it says cite our work, do we need to like actually put it in the correct citation, or could we just use the link? No, just give me the link. I'll put it in my. Thing I'm just gonna use bag. the Declaration of Independence okay. for connotative language. Well, I'm gonna submit my presentation in, with the like assignment in Google Classroom. That way, the images links are there. I mean, I'll give you everything you need, but just to like. I was it. just gonna make a work cited page at the end. That's like, here's all the links. Oh, there you go. Come bite my ass. <laughs> yeah, that'll But work. with with uh, the Declaration of Independence, that's what I did for logos. Yes. I think I was gonna use the Declaration of Independence, but I just found good examples in speeches. I found better information. <laughs> I don't want to be basic. Now I have to go. Oh. Like... <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Is that so? Technically, co common sense could also be. I got an email. What about what about T pain? And by that I mean Thomas pain. But... Dude, okay, you don't know what common sense is. I'm sorry? Common sense the book, it was made by him. I know, I was... I was commenting on that. 
T Pain. T Pain. Wait, would you, would you describe would you describe common sense as as a book? Or... Something that our generation doesn't have. Uh, I'd say a doctrine of sorts, but it has multiple pages, so if it's bound up by some sort of paper and or hardcover, I would call it a book. That's common sense as a book. Okay. Can you quit your, with your bitching over there? <laughs> Whoa. I'm not bitching. I'm just saying. I'm stating. Facts. Some weekend words being thrown, and I... Have you know no, what? We've already here. broken past the dark veil, so we might as well plunge deeper into this. Set this of is this is coming from the dude who was standing on a bridge that was like two feet, two inches off the ground, <laughs> and suffered from earthquake. <laughs> you know, earthquakes yeah, are scary. Is... <laughs> you don't want to mess with that. I played oh, Tyler the Creator song in that too. It was Tyler his best. Beautiful. I used the song Earthquake, which is a joke, because there was an earthquake. <laughs> <clears throat> yep. Alright, now that I have my little thing here. You know, just... th this bunch of... Th th this group we got here is basically just... South Park. Can't in real life. It is, it is. Wait, who's the fat person? Um... Okay, Me. <laughs> I don't know. I I'm fine with murder, so I guess that would kind of make me either Cartman or Kenny. I'm Joe Swans. You've gone. Bro, he's not in even in South. Hey, hey. Yeah. Oh sweet Christ! Yo, I can be Kenny. I'm good at making noises. I know. And I like hoodies. I know. Mm -hmm. You know, no one else does. You know what? You handle it. I'm sorry, did you just drag a body across the floor, Hayden? I said, God damn it, can I? Oh, all I heard was. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't yes. know. Hayden might be a hitman. I didn't know you were fracking in your basement. I'll come back later. Yeah, let me find the oil. Also, uh, I can't drink any of the water because it's on fire. It's fine. Some people also, don't make it too hot because it might turn into flames. So, some people just can't handle their fire water. You know, yeah. that avatar shit. We gotta mix it. You know, I can yeah, I'm just gonna read common keyboard. sense. Thank you. <laughs> just whips out a copy like of green. Common Sense while everyone's waiting. You know what? Time to be an intellectual. <laughs> I've read it before. I think I've read excerpts of it, but not. I thought you were gonna it's, say it's actually it's actually very small. <laughs> yeah, I I'll be honest with you. I have the. It's more of a tabloid. How do you find hyperbole like? <laughs> Easily, but I just have to read the whole document. So don't fire until you exaggeration is eyes, everywhere. Yeah, that literally you find is find the most diva person the in the whole Hill. American Revolution. Honestly, Ben Franklin is a living hyperbole. He he, he literally <laughs> is because he is so insane that he would flirt with everyone he saw in France. You know, he could he could stoop a cactus, and he'd be fine. Yeah, gout or no gout, he's going. You know, I, when I watched him in the one movie, that he had gout, and I was just like, "Oh shit!" They had to carry him like, around in a giant basket and li like litter. He's <laughs> been Franklin in litter on a litter. Uh... <laughs> Honestly, the guy who played him was really good, though. I don't remember who it was. It's probably some famous actor. I'm gonna have to do some research. After I pull this hangnail off. Ow! All I know is pain. Yes. T-Pain. Yeah, T-Pain. See, you're getting it. No. 
<laughs> yeah. I know uh, Lil Yachty was in. Uh, <laughs> he was in. What's it called? In Teen Titans Go. You've overstepped your bounds. <laughs> I'm still a little confused on connotative language, like you. Uh, basically. So you you got one statement. You got one gabagoo. You, you know it's there, <laughs> and you're just. I did that for you. You're welcome. You 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 sit there and you're just like, okay. I don't have food. That is the statement. But the connotative part of that is, I don't have food, I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm looked up an example of connotative, connotative language. It's like, the use of the word suggests different association with its literal meaning, which <laughs> known as the denotation. For example, blue is a color, but it is also a word used to describe the feeling of sadness, as in, she's feeling blue. Yeah, that's basically what I said. Like, uh, there's, there's the literal part of it, and then there's the connotative part of it, where it's, like, not as implied. No offense, but I think connotative language is kind of just retarded. We use it every day in our lives, but I don't think it's needed to... Hey, I speak normal English. I, I'm feel I'm starving. Yeah, guys, as, I'm starving. As a writer, I... You know, you gotta get whimsical sometimes, depending on the person you're writing as. Depending. But, but for the most part, I'm just like, Hey, you said! You said, bitch! Stop crying! You never it. thought I'd hear Hayden curse, but now I'm happy. I've been to his you house. You never thought I would, I would cuss. I've been to his Ooh. house several times. This man's a sailor just like me. I'm just very class, not crass. Wait, I, don't, I, don't have I, I think I've cut. Haven't I cussed in front of you? Probably, but cussing so much of my language that I just don't notice it. Except for the now, that the time that you notice it. It's like, hey, said something. Okay. I'm pretty sure the last project we did, I definitely cussed, but I don't think I got in trouble for that. I don't Lol. remember. You know, in real reality, cuss words are just really dumb. Why they aren't loud? It's because of fucking French people. Censorship. Yeah, in reality, if I knew my dog would be this quiet while watching anime, I would have put on more anime. He's looking for his dog, like, you know, senpai. Dogs can like tentacles. Oh god. <laughs> 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 Tentacle dog coming soon. <laughs> Legit, I put on every other TV show. He barks like it's World War Two. Put on anime, so he and play it. So he just sits in front of it, and he's watching it. Like seriously? Uh, I don't know if he's actually watching it, but I, I, he just hasn't barked at all since I put on this one every anime. Other show he's Maybe it's just, just a coincidence. I... Whenever I go to my Funimation playlist, he just pulls out a crossword and stares at me in judgment. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, like, start, start start to become my therapist. Works. You have a problem, Billy. Lollipops. <laughs> Lollipops. That guy is actually a badass. Christopher Lee is brilliant. He's brilliant and also a badass, because I, didn't he serve in a world war? Yeah, he's huge, too. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's a British, like... I don't know if he was in the Navy he, or the Army, but he was some... He's in the Army, I believe. Uh, but... I, I know, also that believe good. that... He's basically like... What's his name? Um... Ernest Hemingway. Pretty much. He's basically the reincarnation of Ernest Hemingway. <laughs> Honestly, though, I, uh, I could probably fall asleep to his voice. Well, no shit, dude. The guy's voice is like... Mm, too bad he died. But he lived into, like, his 90s, though, I think. Yeah, like, holy shit, right? And he still and he kept that voice. In his 80s, too. He didn't do either uh, Lord of the Rings or Star Wars until he was ancient. And he's like, you know what? I feel like doing this. Well, he made the movie, so... Yeah, he shows up for like five minutes. 
a piece, and he still upstages everyone around him. That's sad. No, it's- You know what's so stupid? You know what's so stupid, though? So, you know the early, like, okay, so... George Lucas, no offense. Uh, I understand that he wanted to create a good series, but George Lucas kind of made a really shitty movie, in my opinion. Well, it's a good idea. It's a good idea. But about him he is that... started. The the thing about he started him... with the. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> you go first. I'm sorry. The thing about him is that he doesn't actually care about the story. He just likes how things look. He he's he tells a story like he has ADD. Oh jeez, he probably did. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. And I'm sure Ancient that people are... Jedi decks. I'm sure people are... We're not even going to talk about them. Uh, <laughs> but I wouldn't be surprised if, like, people actually screech at me, like, he has ADD. How dare you, like, screech at him? And I'm like, don't make a shit. Oh, fuck off. I have ADHD, too. Shut up. It's called medicine, you freak. Just be a good writer. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, 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 no. It's it's not the fact that he he gave us. I, I liked the Star Wars stories. He did a semi decent job at making them. It's just so weird because Disney comes in after he's like done with the series and is like, oh, "We would like to buy it from you." And then he's like, "Okay, here's all the lore that I have uh, on an Adderall, Adderall infused bender," and. <laughs> They're like, you know what? Let's make prequels that are better than the original. That's arguable, my guy. That is kind of arguable, but no offense. Yoda is a fucking puppet in the first in the first movies, and then he's also... just CGI. I agree with you, animation wise, but story wise, I, I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, like, you I could. It, I, I could go on, but I just, I, I don't know. I'm not good at arguing, so I, I don't know how I'm going to present my information. I just know it makes sense in my head. <laughs> Debate. Is Kylo, like, <laughs> to me, Kylo is the only, like, decent character besides the original. Uh, not Luke. Luke's kind fucking... of. Kind of. No offense. Kylo's reasoning for running away was kind of shitty to me. His master pointed a saber at him once, and then he decided to join Dark Side. But that's Luke's fault. That's not his. <laughs> That is Luke's fault, but no, no because, offense, Luke no, is here's a raging idiot during the films. Here's the thing. Episode 6, everyone's telling him to kill Vader. He's the only one that's like, that's my yeah. dad, I can talk to him, I can bring him back. So he's not afraid yeah. of Vader, and he actually does the right thing. But then he sees he Kylo, and he's just like, he sees an inkling of Vader, and he's just like, Ugh! and fucking goes to kill him. I know, him right? Child. I'm like, who the fuck looks at a 12-year-old and says, yeah, I'm gonna go fucking kill that kid? You know what? That's not exactly the argument I was proposing, because I have thought of this, but... <laughs> we all know you want to kill younglings, but for the purpose of this argument, we will not mention it. It's because of all we want. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> But I have to Anakin. say, oh, it's pretty odd that, uh, I have to say, that Palpatine was still alive. I can get understand how he was still alive, because he's, like, one of the most powerful he's a people. Wizard, Harry. <laughs> he's a space wizard. <laughs> and... We gotta look at the Declaration of Independence, uh, but, uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, Kylo Ren is, no offense, kind of stupid for multiple reasons. Oh, so here we go. Uh, well, anyways, let's just start with Luke, first of all, and how much of a dumbass he is. The ancient Jedi texts. You know, I did research on this, and I love hearing how Mark Hamill received, uh... Um, he's hilarious! He hated the sequel trilogy and he's like well, I, 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 had to, 
I had to call Luke, like, Steve or something, because Luke would never fucking do that. And I know that because I That's created good. the character because George Lucas is a terrible director. <laughs> and they're telling me, like, oh, the character's not yours. It's Star Wars. And he's just like, I built it! <laughs> <laughs> you so, dumb motherfuckers! It's me! <laughs> Listen, it's my face! I might have had a motorcycle accident and slid on it, and now I look like a bulldog, but it's still me! <laughs> no, honestly, I think it adds to his character, in my opinion. Him becoming a, re a retarded old man? Yeah! Yeah, it sure adds to it. Right, no I'm offense, done. but <laughs> Luke is pretty weird, though. Like, am, do, can, literally, I, I watched Star Wars through the entirety. I'm like, Luke would never attack. The, you know how retarded certain things are. Like, oh, I get the logic of every Jedi. The Jedi Order needs to end, but holy fuck, it decides to go and burn down the entire Jedi library. Yoda, no, I'll do that for you. Also, no offense, like, what the fuck? How is Rey going to rebuild the entire Jedi Order? Because the Force is female. Oh, good point. Just get all the, <laughs> get all the people that are Force-sensitive to come to her. But no, I get what he's saying. Like, there's no way to tell who's Force-sensitive because... Way back, the, uh... I remember, I think Anakin goes through and just destroys all the lists of, um... The younglings that are Force-sensitive. So yeah, no joke. Impossible. Yep. And, okay, so, if you guys heard of, uh, I think we talked about this, uh, last, a couple days ago. It was about, uh, for, uh the, uh, Star Wars, uh, Jedi Fallen Order. Oh. Cal destroys the fucking oh. holocron! <laughs> Five okay, that's the dumbest mistake you could ever make. Of that game, just for him to destroy Dude. the holocron. Because he thinks that apparently the Imperials will find him and turn him into a goddamn Inquisitor. I'm like, Cal, you're a fucking dumbass, and we're gonna see you in the Mandalorian. He's coming to the Mandalorian? Yeah, apparently I he shows up in it. hate cow testes. Hold on, hold on. We're gonna put in Cal, but we're not gonna put in Ahsoka. Is this what I'm hearing? It, they say, that, that's, they say that, that she's going to be added in. I heard she's, like, I heard something, or, like, chapter 13 or whatever, she's gonna, like, Dave Filoni's helping direct it, so I heard rumors, but I don't know how set in stone it is. Granted, he is also still doing Rebels, uh, That's he's still animating ended, and directing Rebels, which has a soak in it, too, so I don't blame him, actually. Dude, I think that show ended. Really? Yeah. I thought I heard something that there was another season coming out. Because ah, okay, after... maybe. Oh, I don't know. there I can't were say still a few Jedi left besides Luke. You see, my, uh, you see my profile picture? That's yeah. That's my entire feeling about Fallen Order. Yeah, Just... dude, the pur purge trooper moment. Wait, 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 guys. Yes. Nick, you said you're done, right? Yeah. Let's get this started before he has to go to his dad. <laughs> Understood. So, who likes to go first? Can I go first? Wait, can, I, can, I, can I ask one question, though? No. no. Fuck you. <laughs> I can... Good question, come on. Okay, so, commentary language, Griffin. Do you think this would be good? That people have unalienable rights, and amongst these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that secure these rights, governments, and are instituted among men? I... It's not the pursuit of happiness, it's the pursuit of property, I thought. That's John Locke. Oh, my bad. Never mind, continue. I think it could work if you Learn your Locke. lessons, plebe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I probably will. Okay. Wait, w wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, what's my modern... ...conative language? J just go on without me for a moment, okay? Nick, yeah, Nick, let's let Nick go first, because in case we run too long, that way he can just go and we can still continue. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I might, like, dip halfway through if that's fine. That's fine. You, we're going to be talking for a while, so you go, okay. Nick. Alright. Oh, I got it. I'm Nicholas will go first. 
and we're going to go talk, continue to talk about Star Wars. <laughs> go. All right. So is... here we go. Rhetorical is... question. But can they hear us? Hello. Go ahead, right. Nick. Um, rhetorical questions and hyperbole. All right. So we're going to start off with rhetorical question. Uh, the dictionary definition of that is a question asked solely to produce an effect or to make an assertion of affirmation or denial and not to elicit a reply. Uh, my personal definition is a question asked to make the person hearing slash reading it think deeper about what was asked and not made to be answered. Um, my historical example is a document called the Declaration of the Causes and Necessity of Taking Up Arms. Uh, written by John Dickinson and Thomas Jefferson. There's a question asked that is rhetorical, which is, uh, but why should we enamorate or our injuries in detail? And this is an example through making the reader think about like all the injuries suffered. Like why why would we do that? And then there's obviously no answer because it's a note. It's not. It's a declaration rather. Like they're not going to respond to like a text message. <laughs> As for um, a modern example uh, in the song Are We Still Friends by Tyler the Creator. Tyler is often asking in the chorus, Are We Still Friends? Not getting a response from the person that the song is directed to. Believed to be a, a, lo a once lover, a uh, long time ago. Um, kind of like reassuring, like, Are we still good? After all the stuff that happened, like all the bad things. All right, next thing. Hyperbole. Dictionary definition, an extravagant statement or figure of speech not intended to be taken literally. Um, I said it's a statement that is heavily exaggerated to express the true manner of what is being discussed. Uh, so, yeah, that's that. Uh, and then my historical example is a poem, uh, A Red, Red Rose, written by Robert Burns. Um, he dis like discusses how much he loves uh, this woman named Bonnie. And saying like, "Oh, till the seas dry and the rocks melt from the sun," all that, basically saying that his love is infinite. Uh, when in reality, uh, that doesn't make any sense. So, <laughs> modern example in the song "Come Over" by Matt Watson, he uses the line, "I wish I didn't spend a billion at the liquor store," meaning he wish he didn't spend so much money. He actually doesn't have a billion dollars. It's just an exaggeration to express how much money was spent. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I like that. I like that the, yeah. the first example you gave kind of had, like, some Brad Street stuff going on with the whole love thing. That love yeah, thing man. you kids do. And, um... <laughs> Wait, aren't you dating Allison or no? Sorry, <laughs> right, continue. Who would like to go next? I could. If you all want. Let's yeah, let's go right to left. Let's pull a Chinese. Let's go right to left the Chinese time. Chinese um, text. You will convert to Celsius. <laughs> I'm just joking, uh. I'm fine with that. <laughs> so starting with figurative language, uh the definition of it is purely described as well technically, Nicholas has it too, but uh because you stole one because hyperbole is for some reason a oh, its own category even though yeah, it, it, yeah <laughs> it's so fucking stupid but anyways uh anyways figurative language is basically different terms such such as idioms similes imagery and a ton of others to describe an environment or a situation and to add flair to a situation as well such as saying like uh i found this as well a lot I found this a lot in Disney songs, such as, like, Mysterious as, as the Dark Side of the Moon, where, like, uh, Mulan, they're, they're singing about becoming a man and how he's going to, how the, in general, is going to turn them into a man. Like, they'll, they'll be as strong as a raging river, using a simile and using as well as metaphors within it. Such as... Oh shit! <laughs> Such a... it's, it's mostly similes. Yeah. It's just similes. Mo it's actually just all similes. What was the metaphor one I had? 
Ah, uh, well, I lost it. But otherwise, uh, we can also see imag imagery in a lot of things. Uh, if you go back to the Odyssey, you can see uh, one of the scenes uh, of where Homer describes the uh, countryside of Ithaca on how it's beautiful and it has many trees and it even describes his home itself as being very large and made of marble and its intricate designs and, and giant gate. Yeah. Which, you know. That. Yeah, it even mentions his dog that he doesn't see for, you know, like the whole, its entire life and then it just dies when it sees him. I've met people like that. But yeah, that's basically what figurative language is. It, 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 to be honest with you, I could go on for years about figurative language, it's but I'm not going that to because it's all been pounded into our heads already, so I don't see why we need to write a Stephen King I feel novel like about it. I'm I feel like I am like a caveman that's just getting a stone hit into the head with like a fucking mallet from 18,000 years ago. <laughs> and then we got connotative language, which basically Imply is based on the denotation of a word, but but uses emotion to show what it is. Such as, like, let's say I'm like we talked about earlier. I'm feeling blue. Uh, I am using I am. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, I am using the Declaration of Independence for this, as you can see, as the founders have a very strong conviction in their voice about the connotation of wanting independence and the reasons why the British crown is at fault during this. We can see this during, like, it says that all men are created equal, or that ev every man deserves the right to have uh, the f to freedom, happiness, and the, the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And how the crown has trespassed against those truths and happiness. Showing how upset they are. Yeah, so, like, instead of just stating, like, you done these things, it's sort of that implied thing of, okay, you've done these things, and because of that, we're going to go to war and annihilate you. <laughs> yes. I think... Ophelia. And that's basically my historical writing on that. Connotative language is a bit hard to find within and I address it in like, you know, modern stuff. But you can find it in songs like what was it? I'm unsure. What was it? Oh, sorry. It's, no, it's fine. I'm messing around. Oh, Dreaming in America. And it says... It's used multiple times in this, and it says, like, don't stop dreaming, and the work nobody else wants to feed their family. Jeez. That's, that's yeah, then it, it's... Yeah, so... It shows, like, the shittiness of the situation, and it even mentions joining the army... And it describes it as the land of the brave. Hmm. I feel you on that one. I can see that. And that's the connotative I have. But connotative, yeah, or, yeah, basically, that's it. I got gotcha. you. So, so I hope so, that was good enough. No, no, that was that was really well done. That was actually more than I I thought we had. But I I, I dig that. I like that. Believe it or not, I pulled all of that out of my ass. <laughs> That's the best way to do it, though. Yeah, n d bullshitting is the best way to do things. It works for me. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna head out. Okay, make sure to send me your sources and stuff. Oh yeah, definitely. I'll send every link I have. Yeah, lad. Do you need the images or just the like? Uh, names? images as well. Yeah. Because I... Okay. Uh, websites and images. Cool. Alright. See ya. Uh, bye. I don't want to get points. See ya, lad. Yeah, good ye. Do you want your points, Dr. Boy? Why Where's the freaking Gabagoo? Work, work.
So, now we are okay. on to my power. And first we're going to talk about Logos, which is a persuasive technique that attacks the logical side of the brain in order to convince people to an arguer's side. Uh, t basically, it's just logic in general, but in the case of the American Revolution, it's used as more of a persuasive technique. Um, and we can find that in the Declaration of Independence because... Uh, it's a very straightforward sort of mechanical bullet point sort of document. Um, and uh, it uses a very strong cause and effect style of writing. It's very Britain, you done us wrong, bum da bum da bum. Here's what we're going to do about it. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's a pretty straightforward thing if you read through it all. Um... Modern examples of logic are a bit weird. <laughs> uh, because you have two different kinds, at least in the area of field that I'm talking about. Um, you mean ads? Uh, well, I am a movie expert, self-proclaimed, so that that's the, that's the medium that I'm going to be using the most. But... A lot of logos and logical argument sort of things um, can be found in a lot of crime drama or like forensic driven films. Um, so that could be anything from Sherlock Holmes to Silence of the Lambs. Um, because they each have a very linear uh, deductive plot. Um, while it also tries to get into the mind of the antagonist... Because they have such a different and complex thought process than the protagonist, for the most part. Um, and that's where a lot of the Sherlock sort of uh, uh, Clarice Starling sort of elements come in. Where they try and figure out what are you doing and why. I'm sorry about that? Okay, but equally yeah. so, uh, there are films out there that do the opposite, where they try and mess with the logical elements of your brain and twist your your sense of logos um, into really opening your mind and thinking about other possibilities um, that are outside of our normal thought processes and this can be anything from the wizard of oz and alice in wonderland um to modern more modern stories like uh the joker and the shining um because everything in those films is going against the normal logic you have for your life but for such a deeper sort of subtle reasoning that you have to figure out and sort of embrace, um, especially since the way that they paint it is out of your element, and it uh, sort of makes you conform to the rules of a world that is not yours. And because of that, you can actually take lessons from those other things and put it into your own life because your perception is so changed by what you're seeing but equally so that's why some people love these kind of movies and other people don't because it, it does mess with your mind like that a lot um and what Bravo, you missed him all. what exactly was my okay so the picture is up uh it'll be in the it'll be in the thing but it's basically the thought process of a dog versus a cat. <laughs> um, okay. Basically, the dog on the left is saying, he's feeding me, he must be a good person. Whereas the cat is thinking, you're feeding me, I must be a good person. So different perspectives based on the kind of attitude these animals have. A and if you know anything about how these domestic animals act it's definitely true how uh definitely true that 
that that's how they think. But uh, absolutely right, and I almost killed my yes. cat because of it. Oh, but Jesus uh, Christ, Allison! It is a joke for legal reasons. Oh, aren't they just adorable? Perfect little animals. So ethos um, is an arguing technique that relies on someone's uh, credibility or knowledge in order to convince people of their point. This one is a little weirder to point out because it can sort of mix with pathos, which is emotion. Um, because basically... Ethos is like a weird blend of saying, I know that we should do this because I have this, this, and this. Um, I, I have these accolades and whatever, and I, I I know what we should do in this situation more than you. Uh, which, unless you're some of the sad minority out there... Typically, people listen to those who seem to know what they're talking about more. And that's more of where ethos comes into play. Um, but the reason why it goes into emotion and pathos a little bit is because it's also the argument of ethics. And basically saying, as a consensus, is this the right thing to do with whatever we're doing? Um... Once again, the only difference is that people tend to use more of their own status and more of their own knowledge for these kind of arguments instead of trying to push the buttons of someone emotionally. Um, but they're very tightly knit. Um, a good historical example of ethos is Thomas Paine's The Crisis Number no. One from 1776. Uh, this document uses all forms of the psychological trinity, but a lot of ethos comes into play with it. Um, and Thomas Paine's basically using this by saying statements like, well, I've been on the forefront of fighting for American independence and removing us from Britain for a large amount of time compared to... Um, a lot of these people that I'm trying to convince. So because of that, I believe this is what we should do during the revolution because I know what I'm doing more. Um, oh no. Which, it does sound arrogant when you put it that way, but in truth, sometimes it just is what it is. You, you know more than, the, than others, and because of that, you rely on that in order to uh, progress in situations. And especially if you're trying to convince people to your side, um, which uh, Payne and a lot of the other uh, people were during 1776 and so on, uh, he... He kind of has the right to, because people were still very undecided and didn't quite know what they wanted to do, especially with, you know, the hang-up between, you know, patriots and loyalists and all this stuff, and he's just like, listen, I know what I'm doing, follow me! Um, and, and there's many other essays and such that pain does that uses a lot of that ethos sort of angle perhaps less appropriate than it is for the crisis number one but it still it still holds up for that example however ethos has become a massive uh element in a lot of modern culture as well um, and this is where more of the ethical elements comes into play. Um, for book lovers, um, we one of the prime examples, who's basically like the personification of ethos as a whole, is Atticus Finch from To Kill a Mockingbird. His whole mentality of, 
I'm no better than my fellow man in the courtroom, and I just use my talents to get the job done, is basically what Ethos is. Um, and because of that, he... He uses that humble intellect to teach the other characters how to basically live their life well um and how to instill moral and sort of those elements uh here's a quote from him uh that's blatant ethos <clears throat> i gotta get my gregory peck voice warmed up hold on i'm no idealist to believe peck. firmly in the integrity of our courts and in the jury system that is no ideal to me it is a living working reality Gentlemen, a court is no better than each man of you sitting before me on this jury. A court is only as sound as its jury, and a jury is only as sound as the men who make it up. I am confident that you gentlemen will review without passion the evidence you have heard, come to a decision, and restore this defendant to his family. In the name of God, do your duty. So... Basically, he's saying, just do the right thing. It doesn't matter about your personal feelings. It doesn't matter about whatever. Just look at what's happening here. And just come down from your high horse and just do the right thing. Uh, and that and that's basically Atticus's whole motive. Just do the right thing. Um... But, moving on to movies, we have uh, uh, an example of positive ethos, um, which I'll explain what that is in a moment. Um, but the the only movie that I could think of at the time of writing my notes that describes positive ethos is the, uh, a, a old movie, I think from the early 80s, uh, called Bullworth, starring Warren Beatty. Uh, he plays a politician that has kind of had enough with being, like, a stereotypical politician. And he makes it his goal to tell all the people of America all of the crap that all of the politicians are doing on both sides. Even himself. He's like, he basically, the whole movie is him having enough and basically saying... No matter what side of the political scale you are looking at, here's how we're screwing you over that we're not going to tell you about because we need to be elected in. Here's the stuff that I have been doing to screw you all over. <laughs> um, and you've voted me in like seven times now. So it's a, it's a nice commentary on bipartisanship. Um and how that's supposed to work out. And, of course, at first people are appalled by this and don't believe it. Um, half Everybody's accusing each other, but as the movie goes on, and as people try to si silence uh, Warren Beatty's character, his influence sort of begins to put doubt into people and starts to slowly sort of reshape how they view the political world. Because they realize both sides are terrible in some of the things that they do. Uh, so it, it's a pretty unique film. I, I have it recorded. I haven't watched it yet, but I've read a lot about it because it's such a fascinating concept. and uh, it, It's definitely a good thing. But the more common thing to do in films... Um, is what I like to call negative ethos, which is pushing the boundaries of ethics and basically bringing the audience to question, is what we're doing right? So that could be anything from, like, oh my god, I can name so many films. But it, it could be something that's really relevant and really frankly realistic uh things like uh platoon serpico all um sort of real life situations that have incurred even in history 
that make you think what was what we're doing really right um but this even goes as far as like really fantastical films too um stuff like the terminator reanimator clockwork orange even et and the lorax child friendly films uh tackle a lot of ethos based problems uh and of course horror films uh frankenstein is a classic ethos sort of story basically you know talking about is it the right thing to do to build this monster and to progress with these experiments even if you know it's causing so much destruction and whatever even if this thing doesn't want to be alive do, uh, do, do we proceed with this um and one of the one one of my examples of negative ethos and 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 a quote that perfectly proves it uh is Jeff Goldblum's character from Jurassic Park um he when they're talking about the development of Jurassic Park and talking about like oh we're genetically modifying dinosaurs we're going to have this amazing theme park and all this stuff he has one of the most iconic quotes that applies so much to life in general and so many of life situations that I just had to write it down. So, <clears throat> Jeff Goldblum voice. Here we go. Your scientists were so uh, uh, preoccupied with whether or not they could do it that they never stopped to think if they should do it. And um, now they are uh, now they they can package it and, and sell it and they give it to small children. And they put it on lunch boxes and send you gift cards. Um, and he just goes on this rant of, you don't understand the issue of we are genetically modifying real live dinosaurs that do that should not exist in our world. But everyone else in Jurassic Park is so concerned about the entertainment, the money um and and more of just like the greedy capitalistic bits of it than the the humanity and of course nobody listens to jeff goldblum at that point because they're all just like yeah whatever you crackpot and then the dinosaurs get loose so it's after all that he was kind of right um but just that first quote of you you were so preoccupied with whether or not you could do it that you never stopped to think if you should do it. That is ethos to a T. And I say that all the time to different people with uh, a variety of situations in mind. And, and of course, you get to see the beautiful picture there of uh, Jeff Goldblum in the finish, in the, uh, finish project with... Uh, that that hair and those glasses man but uh yeah that that's my that's my hour long rant on my pieces of figurative language so that Thank leaves you. us Thank left you. with madam colbert okay <laughs> no sorry for muting i every time i unmuted chronos would go Crazy, because his anime was paused. You named your dog Kronos. Oh yeah, his name's Kronos. Does he respond to it? Yeah. Oh god. I'll have to send you a picture of my dog. Once I send you the picture, you'll you'll understand why he's called Kronos. Is he like black? Hmm. Is he like time looking or? You're black thinking of the wrong Kronos, Kronos, but we'll talk about that later. Except so. <laughs> I did Pathos fun. But, it's okay. So, the dictionary definition to Pathos is, Patho appeals to the emotions of the audience and looks feeling that already reside in them. Pathos is a communication technique used most often in retor- lit- rhetoric, as well as in literature, film, and other narrative art. All of my examples do not explain how it all- is also used as a way of persuasion. <laughs> that is where I messed up. Oh, of course he's barking now. 
The way I used it is, is not pleasing him. Apparently. But my wording is, uh, you know, you're just, it's sort of like guilt tripping when you think about it. It's like guilt tripping. Except, it basically is. It, okay, I'm glad I'm not wrong here. But um, it's just using the emotions of the people to uh, help them understand what someone is saying. Another the, version is called virtue signaling. The American Revolution quote I used can also be put in paral uh, parallelism. But for the sake of this, we're just going to look at the pathos. It is the one of the famous speeches by Patrick Henry, Give me liberty or give me death. I believe this is somewhere in the third paragraph. I don't remember exactly. It says, we have petitioned, we have re <clears throat> remonstrated, we have supplicated, and we have prostrated ourselves before the throne. We have implored its interposition to arrest the tyrannical hands of the ministry and parliament. One of the biggest things about this quote is that it shows, you know, how much the people are trying to you know, just get away from Britain. Like, you know, completely cut off ties. They're basically pleading. And then, you know, Patrick's just like, <laughs> uh, I'm tired of pleading. Either give me liberty or, you know, I'll die for it. And it sort of, what it said is when it, the crowd sort of, like, noticed that as he was talking, he would constantly raise his voice to give this very, like, I don't know exactly to explain it. It's like a preaching to, mechanism. Yeah, that, that's exactly what it is. It was just preaching to, you know, show how much pain that, the fact that we're just pleading and not actually using any physical action, it's just causing us to get nowhere. And, um, language. <laughs> but one of the, the biggest things that also helped emotionally move this speech was that he just spoke from the heart. He didn't use any notes. He had nothing pre-written. He just stood up and started speaking. And, well, by the end of it, that's how we get the famous line of, I don't know what it, <clears throat> Jesus. I know not what course of others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. And by this time, he's practically yelling it in the room. It's self-explanatory, but I, I don't know. It gives that passion of just, I, I will die in order to be free. One way or another. Score! From what I read. Yeah, yeah exactly. Apparently the uh, the whole room, from what I read, like stood up and like joined him and like just cheered because they agreed with him. Yeah, I'm not a a move me person nor a really good at <laughs> modern uh literature. So I just chose a song. If you know me, you'd expect me to use Slipknot. Absolutely right. For this pathos, I chose to get one of the saddest songs in all of Slipknot, arguably. It is called Till We Die, and it was a memento mori to Paul Gray. And um, it's a the whole song, I could use an example. Instead of, you know, reciting it, I'll just explain it. Around the time they used this song... Many people were very desert, uh, devastated by Paul Gray's death because he died to an overdose. Sort of expected. No. But no one knew how to get their emotion out. And there seemed to be no action. I don't know how else to explain this, but there was no... Not many people seem to understand how big his death was to the band and just the on drugs. So they made this song that was played every single time either his death day would arise or just for a couple months after he died, it'd be this memento mori for him. And uh, the song brought people to tears every, every time. 
and it became one of its best sellers for this album because of it. Again, none of this is really used for what Pathos is probably expecting, you know, it's supposed to persuade. This is just sort of an example of it bringing out immense emotion to a crowd. And it's communicating the band's emotion of just sadness. And of course he's barking. And grief. Apparently he wants to talk too. Technically. And, you know. Go ahead. Technically it is persuasion because they're trying to convince you how impactful his death was. That's true. I didn't think of it that way. But, uh, yeah. Like, it, it, it's just a sad song that, you know, showed exactly how the band felt, but it also showed that you know, there's importance. Like, we need to start changing things about drugs and just bring more awareness to it, especially when it comes to musicians and, you know, artists. I. You speak true, lass. <laughs> We're a happy bunch. I am. I'm sorry. I just. <laughs> I just realized I we, are, we are absolutely ecstatic to be alive with each other. I love you guys. <laughs> Same here. But yeah, you know, Bathos is guilt tripping. That's uh, the best way to explain it. Especially that Sarah McLaughlin commercials. Oh, jeez. This is why I'm a sociopath, because I, I don't feel anything. The first couple That's times, you know, trip. I get sad, but then, you know, if it just plays more, I'm just like... Ah. It's not really doing it for me. 50% of the teenagers are sociopaths? Hmm. <laughs> hmm, let me flip a coin. I am one. Harvey, coin Harvey, 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 Harvey Dent. Harvey, Harvey. <laughs> so, so <laughs> Harvey, what... Harvey, 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 Harvey. So, so what's parallelism or paralysis? Yeah, what's parallelism? Okay, so the gift that's probably going to appear, you know, uh, par Jesus! Parallelism. Parallelism. I had no idea what it was until I, I looked through many examples. And instead of giving you the dictionary definition, which, you know, kind of makes sense, it is basically just repetition. It is the repetition of a phrase or word among many sentences to prove a point or just to get a point across. A lot, I realized a lot of uh, like American Revolution speeches use this a lot, which makes sense. And uh, the one I chose was a speech for, uh, that John Dickinson and Thomas Jefferson did back in 1775. It's called the Declaration of the Cause and Necess Necessity of Taking Up Arms. I didn't... I could read right... That'd be amazing. But it is uh, the speech, the section I'm using just says, Our cause is just. Our uniform is perfect. Our internal resources are great. And if necessary, foreign assistance is undoubtedly attainable. Pretty sure I butchered that. No, you did good. But there's nothing real. It's not like, uh, you know, something you can really explain. It's just... The repetition of our. That is the that is what parallelism. It's just you know, that's the part that's repeating. It's the constant hour. And uh that's really there isn't much to say about it. <laughs> it's fairly quick. And for my modern example, I didn't use slipknot. It's not sad, I promise. It's uh the song Who We Are by Nothing More. Sad. Never sad more. Nothing more. Not never more. Never more. That'd be kind of cool, though. But he, um, I'll read it. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'd kind of laugh if I'm honest. But this is a very inspirational song. It is, um, you know, it's just saying that, you know, humankind can do a lot more than what we're doing now. Which, if I wanted, I could also use this for pathos, but, you know, that's not, not what we're here for. Second the verses, for the blood, for the sweat, for the fears and the things that betray us, the cracks in the mirror and the ones that trip on the pavement. The parallelism here is just four. 
That's all. It's just one word, you know. Four. Super easy. That's it. I don't got a lot. <laughs> That's fine. You got the job done. Yeah. Well, now, now we get to go and do this thing. Now we discuss stuff. <laughs> I think I'm well, actually gonna to pop off. This night. I, uh, I have some math crap that I have to do. So. Wait, 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 wait. Griffin. What? Are you doing piecewise equations? Uh, yes. Fuck, dude. I'm doing them right now. Yeah. Eh, well. Do you understand them at all? Because I'm having a hard time. To a degree, I do. Ah. I'm just over here. I haven't touched a single math thing. You're probably luckier than the both of us. Well, I already finished two of the questions for the homework that's due on Monday, so... I didn't... I haven't touched the thing that I gotta do today. Not to mention I still oh, have to do dude. the NATO's work. Which one is that? I need English. Yeah, yeah, you mean uh, like the, uh, Enlightenment? Yeah. Yeah, I finished that. I did. Just a quick reminder. Procrastinating. We have to do you don't a peer have to do them review twice. For... Yeah, we have to do a peer review thing for yeah. group members. Right now, or? No, no, it's a form, so we can do that before Monday. So, do I send you, like, my sources, Griffin, or? I already have your sources, I believe. Nick is the only one that's been skimping. So is it uh, safe to say that Griffin's turning in the thing to Flipgrid? I'd prefer yep. to, because I'm going to be doing the editing and everything for it. Wait, did I give you... I don't think I did... I didn't give you every source, dude. Alright, let me check. I'll email him. I'll email to you, so... One, two... I have, I have two images and one source for Homer's Odyssey. Well, I think Homer's Odyssey thing's out of the picture. I don't think so. Wait, really? No. Why? Because the the two images you sent me were the memes. Well, the images, I get it, but I mean, like the Homer's Odyssey has to go out the window because it's, uh, I was using that as my historical, but technically, I could do make it as my modern if I really wanted to. Oh. Uh, yeah. If if you have the time, just if you can find a source, send it on this. Uh, Send the link on this Discord chat, and I'll put it in. Okay. Weird question. We're group one, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. We're the Thank first you. boys. Well. That's all I needed. Thank you both. Thank, thank all of you for helping me out and putting this together. No oh, problem. We all did we our work. Really do much, though. Nick kind of just sat on, probably on the toilet doing this type <laughs> thing. Aiden, what's your last name? Schroofer. No, oh, Jesus. Can I uh, get a spelling for that? I don't know how to take that response. You're going to get a spelling for that? Uh, yeah. S C H R U E F E R. Thank you. Believe it or not, you're not the first one to ask. How to spell my name. You German. I'm just shitty at grammar, too. No, I just have a German last name. 